Mr. Morris, I don't want to leave you out of this conversation because what you have brought uh, to the table as we're discussing these, uh, these opportunities when it comes to, to energy uh, storage technology, um, as I mentioned, we've got to be able to have the, uh, the, 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 the minerals, the critical minerals that allow us to, uh, to lead in, in, in these spaces. Um, you mentioned China um, and not only uh, pointed out that, that uh, China has significant quantities of, of critical minerals. Well, we in this country also have um, uh, some good supplies. Um, I, I know in Alaska we are looking with great interest at some of, of the supply, uh, supplies that we have. Um, but we also recognize that in addition to China having the materials, they have the, uh, the factories, um, they are doing the processing, they really are in control of many other parts of that, of that supply chain. Um, I think it was you, Dr. Sprinkle, who, who mentioned the, uh, the United States and, and the leading role that we have played with the development of the lithium-ion batteries. But Mr. Moore, is, where, where do we go if we are in a situation um, that I have outlined where we are reliant on, on other nations, um, uh, 50, at least 50 percent of of 30 different minerals, we're 100 percent reliant on 20 different minerals, uh, nine of which China was the primary source, at least 50 percent of another 30 minerals. Uh, but in addition to, to not having the resources here, but also relying on China for the processing, how, how vulnerable does this make us? How concerned are, are you and, and others in our ability to continue to lead in, in these areas as we try to develop these technologies if we don't have these critical minerals? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I wouldn't be necessarily concerned about every rare mineral or mineral that you can't pronounce or that sounds like a rare, rare mineral uh, because they're used in very high-tech uh, applications. They might be very niche. They might be part of a big growth industry. I would be very concerned about technologies that are going to be core to the next big industry energy storage, because that's going to fundamentally alter the car industry, the auto sector is going to fundamentally alter the energy space over the next hundred years. And, and so those core minerals, um, well, let's say the battery technology that will be central to that for the next 10 years, 10 to 15, will be lithium ion batteries. That's because of the cost, it's because of the scale they're being uh, produced, they're going to be produced over the next five years, uh, with the rise of these battery mega factories around the world. And so really, I'd be looking at the four critical raw materials that go into a lithium-ion battery, um, which is lithium, graphite, cobalt, and nickel. But again, these aren't... Uh, nickel is a commodity, it's a metal, but it's actually the nickel chemical that goes into a battery, very specialised processing route. Not many people do this. Of those four raw materials, the US for batteries, the US imports 100% of each. So no mining of these uh, speciality, speciality raw materials happens in the U.S. Uh, yet, hey, apart from Nevada. Explain to me, US. if you will, because you, you've used that term now uh, several different times, that we need to view these not as commodities, but spe specialities. Yeah. So these are niche. So essentially a commodity, you would uh, dig it out of the ground, and you have a, a, like iron ore, for example, or coal, and you have a customer that can use uh, that product pretty much straight away. Um, it's driven really by the supplier side, not the customer. For these uh, raw materials, they, are, uh, they change per customer. So the lithium that one battery company might get might be slightly different to the, the lithium that another battery company gets. And these are very specific customers. So really there's a, um, a tailoring that happens and a, a, a couple of steps of uh, processing, chemical processing that happens to the raw material. And it's those steps that the industry... Uh, that countries actually need to fully understand. Because we're not doing any of that processing here, are we? No. No. For Is lithium, most of it happening in China? Yes. But for lithium, um, you have two companies. You have uh, Albemarle, which is a U.S. company, and FMC Lithium as well. And they do produce some battery-grade lithium here, but they're not sourcing the lithium from the U.S. 
Uh, for the others, no, it happens in China. Graphite, 100% of anode graphite that goes into a battery is from China. 100% of it. Exactly. We've got some graphite up north that we're looking to, to develop. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two areas. There's Alaska, there's Alabama um, in the U.S. that have been uh, developing resources. And it's quite interesting. It's not just the resource. It's the processing know-how mm -hmm. to, to make these battery-grade materials. And that's really where the gap is. Is it, is it an issue of, of investment in, in the supply chain here in the United States that's holding us back? Or is it our regulations? I know that from a processing perspective, that, that's, that's a real challenge for us. But is it more on the investment side, in your view? Yeah, investment would be number one than regulation number two. But I think that investment, as this industry grows tenfold, battery, lithium ion battery demand will grow tenfold over the next 10, 15 years. Um, then the, the investment should become obvious. It, it should, the money should come, it should come from somewhere. At the moment, it isn't. But that should sort itself out in a, in a reasonable time frame. So um, you think just increased demand will bring that investment on? You yep. think that that will marry yeah. up here? I, I, I think so. Uh, but I think the, the, at the moment, it's all coming from institutions, whether New York or San Francisco or places like this. And they're starting to understand the, the battery story and how big this is going to be and how disruptive. But it's still, the problem is, all of these companies that are making, uh, that are building the mines or that are doing the processing plants, the battery grade processing plants, are all sm very small capex, or very small companies. So institutions can't invest in them because they end up owning 100% and they can't get in and out and do that investment thing. And so. For now, it's, it's, an, it's a niche industry going into the mainstream. We're kind of stuck in the middle at the moment. And, and so these companies are now looking for help from the industry, from investment, and from government. And they're not quite getting it yet. So le let me ask uh, both Dr. Sprinkle and, and Mr. Cuthpaul. Are, are you concerned about the, the, the issue that Mr. Moores has raised with, with the ability uh, to access, whether it's the lithium, the graphite, cobalt, the nickel? So yeah, there, there are concerns about that. And so we've, we've got active programs looking at developing uh, uh, sodium replacement for lithium that we can get. It's nowhere near the size of what they're doing in Japan, where every major manufacturer is developing an alternative to have a sodium ion battery in case they, they need to, that can plug into their system. Um, other materials we're looking at, like with our vanadium flow battery, um, we're not n on the same level of criticality, but can we take that to a point where I can make an organic molecule that can be synthesized and f perform the same function as that vanadium species? Then I'm no longer dependent upon uh, um, uh, commodity metal at that point to be able to keep that cost structure in but place. But how far... How far out is that? And, and that's, that is a big challenge uh, to do that, to take that molecule and make it electrochemically active in there and soluble and sta stability that we need. But the payoff at the end is that you have something you can control and something that you can uh, design the properties that you want and control the, you know, basically how much is made. So, hmm. Mr. Morris? Yeah, it's, in? it's interesting actually that um, you look at different battery technologies, vanadium flow is one of them. Um, but the reason we keep going back to lithium ion is we just we follow where the money is. Uh, $35 billion has been invested in these lithium ion battery mega factories. Now, it's hard to understand, but it's true that they're invested without any kind of true understanding of the supply chains that feed them and the minerals that go into these batteries. It's only after they put these grand plans in place they realize we better look at getting our lithium, or lithium price has gone up four times, or nickel's going up double. Um, and so, really, I guess the, the point is that the decision, the, the direction of the industry has already been made, the blueprint for the next generation of this, the next step of this energy revolution for electric vehicles, and for, um, to a lesser extent, but certainly for utility storage. Um, a decision's been made on lithium ion. And it's two chemistries, actually. It's NCM and NCA, which is a nickel, cobalt, manganese, and a nickel, cobalt, aluminium. Um, but it's the supply chains that are always the last to react because people mm -hmm. that plan these things, whether it's VW planning to put 10 million electric vehicles on the road or whether it's the battery companies planning to build 15 gigawatt hours worth by 2020, the mine 
upstream is the last link in the supply chain and the last thought. Uh, it's only recently because they've been getting these price shocks. They've been going to their customers and uh, getting charged three, four times for their lithium hydroxide. That's when they realize there's a problem and these, these supply chains have to be um, looked at long term. Well, you know, it's, it, it is a, it's a part of our dilemma here. We're, we're clearly building the interest, the demand, um, and, uh, and, and, and yet in order for this to, to really uh, get to the point where we, we talked about breakthrough earlier, and, and most of you said we don't really need a breakthrough. We've, we've got, uh, we've got the, the intelligence here. We've got the technology. We just need to work to, to bring down the cost. Well, if the cost is going to be um, subject to the whims of China or other nations that hold the, the initial resource that, that we need there, um, that's going to make it tough to get to that point where, where everyone would really like this to, to be if, if we are in a situation where uh, you have this foreign dependence. And, and I think about the position that it puts us in because it wasn't too many years that we were talking around this, this uh, committee room here about our, our vulnerability as a nation um, on, on OPEC, on, on nations like, like I Iran and, and uh, uh, Iraq and Venezuela and people that we didn't particularly want to be doing business with. And you know, our technologies have allowed us to move beyond that. But I, I think about the, the issues that present themselves when we think about the minerals that go into so much, well, just everything that we do. We don't think about them as part of that supply chain and how it influences the decisions, whether it's for the investors or whether it is for the, the uh, um, for the market that we are trying to grow as we try to reduce the, the overall costs. Uh, so I, I appreciate the, the focus that you bring to the conversation, Mr. Moores, because I think it is an important part of, of what we're trying to do here. We want to be innovative. We want to be breakthrough. We want to get to, to this point where we can incorporate and integrate all these additional technologies through the use of energy storage. Um, and, and so much of, of what Senator Franken wants to do with, with renewables mm -hmm. and, and, and I as well, it, it, it's going to depend on our ability to get this stuff out of the ground and then be able to, to process it. So uh, th something that needs to be talked about, and, and, and we're doing the talking here. Senator Franken, do you want to have the last